to worship. Wherever you are, whenever you are, you are welcomed. You are loved in this space. We are so grateful to have you here with us. I invite you to let us know how you are worshiping with us today. If you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube or on one of our local TV stations, wherever you are, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. I invite you now into worship, with surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. and expansive homes. We are from this country and far away. We are from big families and dinners made for one. We are from stages of grief and stages of love. We are from hot summers and cold winters. We are from kitchens with passed down recipes and front porches with old familiar swings. We are from the dust of the earth and the stars of the sky. We are from a lot of places, but today we are here. Today we are together. Holy God, gather us in. Our opening hymn this morning is I Love to Tell the Story. truth-telling, a moment to pause and reflect, to be honest about the places we want to grow and the way we need God's help. Family of faith, there is power in honesty, so pray with me. We worship a loving and gracious God. When people heard that Jesus was from Nazareth, they asked, can anything good come from Nazareth? We confess, God of beginnings, that we haven't asked the same questions. Can anything come from that side of town? From a school with poor test scores? From a criminal history? From the opposite political party? From a history of addiction? From a faith with doubt? From a church with faults? Holy God, forgive us for doubting that you are in all things at all times. Open our eyes to see your goodness, not as something that resides here or there, but as the expansive grace that it is. Can anything good come from there? Yes. Always yes. Amen. Family of faith, if you ever ask yourself, can anything good come from this messy and human life of mine? Remember this. God is always whispering yes. You were created in the image of God. Your origin story is one of goodness and love from the very beginning. 
So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. God is here. God is at work among us. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Gloria Patri. So I would encourage you to use these questions at home for conversation. You can read the scriptures and then you can follow up with questions below. Do you know where your family came from? Where are you from now? What is good about people coming from different places? Why is it important to remember that we all came from the same place originally? These questions can be great ways to share with your children about their own origins. And from there, get to the place where we realize that God made us and created us all, beloved and named us God's children. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you give us questions that help us figure out who we are deeper and more meaningfully than we would ever imagine. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 2, 4b through 15. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. No shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. And then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being. John 1, 35 through 51. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard what John had said, who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. They brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You shall be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, Follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from a town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathan asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said to him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. <laughs>
your way around town, never ask a local. Moving to town, I learned this lesson very quickly because I would ask for directions on how to get to certain people's homes and they usually come out like this. Well, you go down to Jimmy's old barn and you know the road stretches down a bit and the old barn's on the right and, and then when you get to the barn you turn left and you keep going until you get to May's cow field and then once you get to the field, May's field, then you go right and you keep going about three miles, which is never three miles, and you get to Ma's old farm, and that's where you're gonna find them. We all have such a familiarity with one another that directions sound a lot like that. Rather than being you go north on the road and you turn right, it's all familiar. Because we know our stories. We turn, we know where people will be. If you live in the area, that's great. If you know people, that's wonderful. But if you're new, like me, directions like that make a lot of assumptions and aren't very helpful. The question we're asking this Sunday is where are you from? I love that question. Because that question comes to you, minus assumptions. Around here, where are you from? It can be easy to forget to ask that question because when you've grown up with the people around you, you know where they're from. You know about their family, you know their history, their origins, their story. Where are you from? Might seem like an odd question. But I think that that question stems from curiosity and engagement. It's an open and a listening door, one that is about learning from those around us, one that abandons the assumptions. There were equally curious minds going on in our text with Christ. When the disciples first entered in and they began to meet this new rabbi, this hot thing on the hot off the presses they began to ask where are you staying <laughs> can anything good come from nazareth and here were the answers come and see follow me those aren't exactly answers to the question right there's not anything specific in there that tells you how to get to where you're going to be there are no assumptions. You know, Christ could have said, I am staying with so-and-so. Instead, Christ invites them on a journey. Come and see. Follow me. What an exciting thing to be invited to come and see, to follow Jesus. What an exciting thing to be asked to lay down your assumptions, to explore. As disciples, each is called to follow, and they are invited into a new space. And look at what those new spaces are. I just love how in this text we see this recreation of identity happen. That just as Christ is refusing to answer their questions black and white, Christ is remaking them. For instance, in the case of Peter, where they re he is renamed, Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. In other cases, like Nathaniel, they are seen. I saw you while you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Here in this space, the disciples are invited to engage in a relationship with one another, and it's in that engagement that they learn and discover who Christ is. It's in that engagement that they are called to examine what they are there for. And they are called to set aside their assumptions. Assumptions like, can anything good come from Nazareth? Consider this, where are you from is an opening question, a question that invites you to learn, a question that holds you in sacred space of curiosity. 
It's a question that doesn't assume anything about the people that you're with, other than to say, I want to know more. I want to know more about who you are. I want to know more about what you are. I want to know more about where you come from. I want to understand. Can you imagine what it's like to approach Christ with that kind of openness, with that kind of understanding, with that kind of desire to know more, to be in relationship with Christ? I think that that relationship that we have with Christ, it is so easy to get called into when we drop our assumptions and we simply come and see we simply follow. And I think that that relationship is more than just about getting to know Christ on our own. The disciples weren't called to learn about who Christ is on their own, and they wouldn't sit in a space on their own by themselves. At the same time that they were learning about who Christ is, they were learning about one another. They were asking questions about one another. Part of being together in community, part of this faith that we have is communal. There's a piece of it that calls us into one another's presence, that invites us to learn as much as we can. And we need to do that with open questions. Where are you from? is a great question because it allows people to come from all sorts of places. If someone were to ask me, where are you from? It's easy for me to answer, where am I from? Washington State, California, Michigan. Where am I from? I come from a long line of strong women, some of whom have served in the pulpit before. Where am I from? I'm from a family of four children. I'm the only girl. Hear me roar. Notice how many answers there can be to one simple question. Sometimes when we sit in the pews together and we've been together for so long, we become complacent about each other. We forget to ask those questions. And honestly, sometimes we do that with our faith as well. When we grow up with Christ around us and Christ within us and we know the liturgy by heart, we can become a bit complacent and we forget to ask, where are you from? We forget that God wants and calls us into deeper and deeper and deeper community with one another. God calls us to continually seek out one another and to keep growing to keep looking for moments of connection, moments of family. I served a, a Lutheran church, it was one of my first uh, places that I served as a youth and children's director. And I am not Lutheran by birth, I didn't grow up in the Lutheran church, and as far as I know, I don't have any Lutheran roots. But we quickly learned how important origins were for my Lutheran congregation because they kept wanting to ask, where are you from and who is your family? And as they were trying to make connections, they were trying to figure it out. It was fun to be part of that community because they wanted to connect. They wanted to be connected with me. And I still remember the day when some little old lady discovered that Adam's family was connected to the Lenz family, and it's a good Lutheran clan. And in fact, we were related to her in some distant connection. The next Sunday, we had copies of family stories and photos, and it was amazing to see how that one connection drew us deeper into community. Because someone in our community of faith didn't give up asking us the questions, where are you from? When we ask people this question, we are signaling our interest in who they are, and we are telling them we want to hear their story. Our origins, our traditions, what is happening in our life today, all come together to make us who we are. 
And those things make us human. So I invite you to seek after those questions. Continually ask, where are you from? Where have you been? What has your life been like? Take the gift when someone shares it with you. And I invite you to do the same in your own faith with Christ Jesus. Go to Christ and ask, Lord, where are you from? What are you doing? Where do you come from? I want to know more. Because it's in there that we will find deep and meaningful relationship. And it is in that deep and meaningful relationship that we learn to love one another, we learn to honor one another, and we learn to be together as God's call. Where are you from? Amen. Our closing hymn is In Christ There Is No East or West, verses 1, 2, and 4. disciples come and see come and see the healing that is about to take place meals at the table the little ones who will run to me come and see the prisoners freed the hungry fed the demons cast out come and see the crowds and the walking on water and the prayers in the garden come and see friends we are being invited to come and see a deeper life of faith one of the ways we can say yes is by giving what we have time, money, and our talents. So let us say yes to this invitation of faith together. Let us give our tithes and offerings. Amen. Let's lift up our voices with our doxology. We don't always know how to listen, but you are in my ears all the same. We don't always know how to believe, but you surround me with beauty, and we find ourselves held together in love. Where we come from, there are so many distractions. Where we come from, there is so much noise. Find us, hold us, and use these gifts to all that we offer. And now we lift up our voices together in the words that you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, and the kingdom, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing benediction is a little different. And so I invite you to listen. 
Family of faith, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumption, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resiliency to choose love even when it's hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you. In the name of the great connector, love itself. Go in peace and serve the Lord.